Hey guys, and welcome to my Bishop Burst and Bossing Support Guide. I've been getting questions regarding how to burst as Bishop and what you should be doing when playing this class as a support in bossing parties. So today I wanted to talk about these things and give some advice for what you should be doing in party play. I'll be giving a quick run through of important skills to be using during bossing, give a demo on how to burst with Bishop, and then give some tips and tricks for what you should be doing as a support for every boss from Arcarium to Kalos, so feel free to skip around to whatever will be useful to you here. Now, before I jump into the video, I want to give a shout out to Angela for writing a very detailed guide to Bishop. It covers pretty much everything you'll need from Link and Legion setups to training guides and bossing tips. It's a great one-stop shop for any questions you might have regarding this class, and if you're new to playing Bishop, I'd recommend you check it out. Uh, I'll be leaving a link to it in the description. First off, I want to go over all of the skills you should be using in bossing parties, separate into four categories. We have healing, buffing, debuffing, and utility. Starting with healing, these are all the skills that provide any sort of healing for your party. In order of when you unlock them, we have Heal, Holy Magic Shell, Holy Fountain, Angel Ray, Holy Water, Angel of Balance, and Benediction. The four primary ones you should be using for healing are Heal, Holy Fountain, Angel Ray, and Holy Water. Heal and Angel Ray are dependent on your max HP. The more HP you have, the stronger your heals are. In cases where your parties are struggling to stay healthy, you could opt to take HP increasing links, rearranging your legion, or using hyperbody to increase your heal value. Holy Fountain and Holy Water are actives that can summon interactable towers and chalices for your party members to use. They can press the up arrow on them like portals to heal themselves. Keep in mind that the healing from the Holy Water chalices and from your benedictions scale with your int, so these will become increasingly valuable as you gain more stat. The other skills listed here shouldn't be used for healing primarily, but do indirectly provide it and can come in handy when your party is bursting. Shell outright heals 50% of your party member's max HP, Angel of Balance will heal your party members for 16% of their max HP every 5 seconds, and Benediction will periodically heal up to 10% max HP. On to buffing, we have Holy Symbol, Advanced Blessing, Resurrection, Angel of Balance, Benediction, and Peacemaker. Starting with Holy Symbol, aside from XP bonuses, what additional buffs you apply is dependent on your hyperskill passive loadout. With the preparation passive, you give 10% abnormal and elemental status resistance. Abnormal status resistance decreases the duration of status effects, so using this for bossing parties where you also have CC that can't be cleansed could help save your party members' lives. You should also be using Holy Symbol in the loot room with the item drop passive to give your party members 30% extra drop, which would beat out their decent Holy Symbol node skills. Advanced Blessing, Angel of Balance, Benediction, and Peacemaker all buff party damage. Advanced Blessing, Angel of Balance, and Benediction strictly provide buffs, and then Angel of Balance and Benediction scale with your int. Benediction doesn't cap out until you have 100,000 stats, so up until that point your Benediction will become increasingly valuable as you progress through the game, providing up to 45% final damage. Angel of Balance provides a less valuable regular damage percent, but can provide up to 100% damage, also depending on your stat. I'll be talking about Resurrection more during the Utility section, but in terms of buffing, all you need to know is that Resurrection does provide a damage percent buff to whoever you revive with it. Last but not least, we have Peacemaker. Uh, this provides a flat damage percent buff to all party members that come into contact with the skill's explosion radius, either at the end of the cast or on the second cast. Uh, try to use it on top of all of your party members to ensure that they all receive this buff. Bishop comes with two debuffs. Number one is Angelic Wrath. This applies a 44% defense reduction debuff to all targets hit for 60 seconds. Think of it as giving your party members a 44% IED potential line. Second, we have Angel Ray. When you hit an enemy with it, you inflict a stacking debuff that can stack up to 5 times. Each stack provides a 2% final damage debuff up to 10%, which applies to all party members. Finally, we have the utility skills. We have Divine Protection, Dispel, Holy Magic Shell, Resurrection, and Heaven's Door. For protecting and removing debuffs, we have Divine Protection and Dispel. Divine Protection is a preventative personal utility skill, but can help your survivability in some bosses. Uh, what it'll do is shield you from 5 status effects while the barrier is up, including things such as skill lock, accuracy reduction, some stuns, and among other things. Dispel is used for after debuffs have been applied to either you or your party members. You can remove the aforementioned debuffs, along with other ones like Potion Lock, Seduce, Zombify, Keyboard Reversal, and Darkness to name a few. For keeping party members alive, we have Holy Magic Shell and Heaven's Door. Holy Magic Shell, as mentioned before, has healing built into it, but its primary use is to decrease damage taken. 
uh, for a set number of hits. What you'll do is decrease damage taken by a percentage depending on your hyperscale passive loadout, uh, either 10 or 15 percent, and the skill will also block damage entirely against some boss attacks which I'll cover in the bossing section of this video. Heaven's Door applies a passive buff that, in cases where you would take a fatal hit, you'll survive and be healed to full. The buff has a cooldown of 10 minutes when cast, so if a party member consumes the buff, they can't receive it again for those 10 minutes, or after you'll have to recast door for them to receive the buff. If your party is prepping buffs before a boss fight, a trick is to apply the buff 10 minutes before entering so party members can wait out the first cooldown, then they can immediately receive the buff again after they lose the buff and essentially get two door buffs back to back. Finally, Resurrection. This skill will resurrect any dead party members in an area. As mentioned before, it gives a damage buff and resurrects the player, maintaining all of their existing buffs, but note that it'll still remove one life off of the resurrected player's life count. It has a unique edge case where, if a party member dies with Kana's domain buff or while Ring of Restraint is active, both buffs would be preserved where if they respawned on their own, they would lose these buffs. So if a party member dies during burst, try to use this to revive them instead of them manually reviving themselves. Now for the last bit before we get into the burst rotation, as with any explorer mage, infinity is key for your damage. This is arguably the most OP buff in the game. It will increase your final damage up to 115% based on how long it's been active. Since it takes time to charge, you need to plan your cast times ahead of when you're bursting as it takes roughly 79 seconds to fully charge infinity. If you have 163% buff duration, once your Benediction or Angel of Balance skills have a minute of cooldown remaining, that's usually a good indicator to pop Infinity to get ready for your next burst. One additional note regarding Bishop Burst is that this class can be flexible as either a 2 minute or 3 minute burst class. The two skills that determine this are Benediction and Angel of Balance. When you press the skill once, it'll automatically go on a 3 minute cooldown. If you press the skill again before the orange border disappears, you can instead decrease the duration of the skill and decrease the cooldown to be 2 minutes instead. When should you 2 or 3 minute burst? In party play, you should always go with whatever your party's burst cycle is on. If you have all 3 minute cooldown party members or mixed burst cooldowns, go with 3 minute bursts. In the case that you have all 2 minute burst classes, go with 2 minute bursts. Now if you are solo bossing, usually you'll want to work towards progressively getting to 2 minute burst rotations, but you are limited by a few factors. Number 1, your cooldown on Blood of the Divine. You'll want to be able to hit roughly 55k int to be able to maintain as close to a 2 minute cooldown on this skill as possible. But note you can use Mercedes Legion uh, cooldown reduction, Maple Goddess Blessing, and Weapon Jump to be able to reach this threshold earlier. Once you are around the 40k stat clean mark, it can start being worthwhile to do 2 minute bursts, and then wait the few extra seconds for Blood of the Divine to be available to do a 2 minute burst. Um, another limiting factor could be your Air Nova level. You'll want this node to be as close to level 25 to have a 2 minute cooldown so you can bind with your burst. And then finally, with Oz rings, <laughs> in the unlikely event that you have Weapon Jump or Ring of Restraint rings before you hit that 40k stat clean mark, those can make ring swapping and doing 2 minute bursts earlier more viable. Onto the final part of this video, I want to start with general bossing advice and then I'll go over tips for each boss in the game. First off, under your third job skills, make sure you right click Dispel until you see this little lock icon appear. This will allow you to see your party members debuffs. Number two, charge infinity before boss entry if you're bursting right away. And also use divine protection since the shield has unlimited duration until debuffs get applied. Number three, when party bossing, always place Holy Fountain somewhere convenient for your party to use. Number four, use holy water when it's at five stacks. 
This is just for more options for healing for the party, and never hurts. And then finally, make sure you're still applying the Angelic Wrath debuff every 60 seconds. You can time this with your fountain placements when you place Holy Fountain, reapply Wrath, or vice versa. I'm going to resume commentary for the remaining bosses just to better explain some things. For Will, Shell is your best friend and has several applications throughout the whole fight. Right now in phase 1, when you enter a test threshold, a message will appear on screen. If you see the red glowing eye, then you are in the safe dimension. Uh, I'm going to switch over to the unsafe one. Here you can use Shell to negate the insta-kill screen crack and safely pass the test. In phase 3, you'll want to watch out for Will's poison attack. This will attach a poison debuff to one person in the party. Everyone else surrounding that party member will take frequent damage, so make sure you cast Shell when you see it on as many party members as you can. By doing so, they won't take any ticking damage, and you're safe to group up without issue. Lastly, in Phase 3, Will has two dangerous attacks to watch out for. Usually people will call them out by his eye color, so when they're white, you have to move from your current location to avoid a one-shot. This can be hard for mages to dodge, and you'll likely need to get used to the timing, so if you're feeling unsure, you can use Shell to mitigate 10% damage and take 90% health damage instead of dying. For Gloom, Dispel and Divine Protection will help you deal with every status effect he inflicts, including the Meteors and any attacks from his adds in Fear Mode. For some extra tips, uh, firstly I would recommend placing Fountain of Vengeance at the bottom of the fight when you enter Fear Mode. This will clear some of the adds and decrease the gauge faster, so you can get out of fear mode sooner. Second, watch out for the undead debuff. If you use heal on someone with it active, it will instantly kill them. You can dispel the debuff, then safely heal them afterwards. Or don't. Who is stopping you? There's not much to say about Varicilla. She blocks all healing and you can't resist her status effects. The only thing you can really use is door to prevent HP deaths. As a quick tip, if she's using her blue scythe attack, you can teleport downwards immediately after her knockback to avoid getting flung far away. For Dark Null, a lot of the same things apply for Bishop as with Gloom. You can use Dispel and Divide Protection to deal with all the status effects in the boss, from the Meteors or from the Elite bosses. Divine Protection especially will block the long stun Dark Null applies from his dive attack. You can use Fountain of Vengeance to clear the adds. 
Uh, they aren't too dangerous, but for some classes with single target attacks, they can be annoying to deal with, so it's just another nice way to passively clear them out. And this last tip applies for any explorer mages. The safest place to be against Darknul in a summons is in the air. So when in doubt, when bad patterns come up, feel free to up jump and wait them out. Black Mage is a boss where Bishop really starts to shine. First and foremost, your healing is incredibly powerful here. Parties will stay grouped up for the entirety of the fight, so you'll be able to keep everyone topped up. Uh, make sure you're watching the HP bars more closely, and in phase 1 and 2 you should be using heal throughout the chain attack sequences. Second, in any phase, if you or a party member receives both a black and white curse, they'll get a giant indicator on the screen like this. They'll lose a life and become skill locked, but you can dispel the skill lock right away. In phase 2, it's standard to place your holy fountain to the right of the black mage where the party will be grouped. Also, in Phase 2, when Black Mage applies a Darkness debuff that reduces visibility, make sure to dispel this as soon as possible for your party. In Phase 3, Fountain is usually placed in the right corner. Note that Black Mage's bubble works similar to Magnus's blue zone where you will have reduced healing if you're outside of it. Your Holy Fountain and Holy Water bypass this penalty though, so party members can receive full healing value from these even if they're outside of his bubble. Last thing I want to note is that Mana Wave is really helpful in Black Mage. Um, you can use it to dodge the purple rolling balls in phases 2 and 3. And then when you get to phase 3, there is that up full map attack where you have to jump up onto the platforms, and you can use Mana Wave to get away there as well. On Desteran, there are two things you should focus on. Like with Black Mage, make sure you're keeping people healed, and second, be proactive in cleansing darkness debuffs. In Phase 1, Saren's Radial Lasers, Floor Pillars, and Meteors can all afflict party members with darkness, which can cut your party's burst damage. So if you see people get hit, be ready to remove it. In Phase 2, Saren's Radial Lasers in her noon phase will still inflict darkness as well. During Phase 2 Noon Phase, Saren has a slow wind-up laser attack that fires across the whole map and will stun anyone in its path. You can dispel this stun from other party members only if you aren't stunned by it as well. During Phase 2 Sunset Phase, Saren inflicts a healing debuff with a red marker appearing above the player's head that reduces healing. You can dispel this to be able to fully heal party members again. For Fountain Placement, in Phase 2 Noon, most parties will play the left corner of the map as it's safest from the map laser beams and bombs, so you can place Fountain nearby as well. In Phase 2 Sunset, you'll group up in the middle to avoid Flame Pillar techs, so place Fountain in the middle here. Saren's Wave, or Banana Attack as people like to call it, in Phase 1 is usually handled by going over it, but mages have a trick to teleport while staying ducked. So while you're holding down, use your regular melee attack to do a little poke, and then teleport to the left or right. You can do this twice to bypass the banana much faster. The last boss I'll be talking about today is Kalos. Bishop's utility is going to be a little limited with this boss. Most of your value comes from your buffing and debuffing since this boss is dependent on your party being able to output massive burst damage after test phases. Bishop can be a liability for a party surviving in Kalos due to having no natural iframes, especially during tests where everyone has to survive, so I'll primarily talk about some tips to stay alive. First, be wary of bomb stacks. Each bomb does 30% of your max HP, so tanking 4 will kill you. Standing on the second or third tier platforms in the Kalos arena can be dangerous since you can get hit by bombs next to you and below you if you're not in the air, so make sure you're ready to avoid them somehow. These bombs are proximity based and will stack based on the number of players in the vicinity, so if you guys are all piled on top of each other you could have 6 or more bombs appear right on top of you. When they do, make sure you quickly teleport away. Um, if you guys are grouped during burst, it's a good habit to use your Genesis iframe during burst, that way you can disregard the bombs and stay grouped and continue buffing the party. During phase 2 test, if the left tower is active, be ready to use here as well. If you use it before the laser hits you, you won't get stunned.
Even though it's not a true iframe, ethereal form will also save you if you can't get to the bubble during a second phase test. It's good to hover it as a panic button if it's unsafe to get to the bubble, and you and your party will pass the segment. Onto some quick small utility tips. You'll want to place Holy Fountain in the middle in both phases. A successful party will be focused primarily on communication, while also being spread throughout the whole map so you can see where Kalos is at. Uh, so your best bet to keep people healthy is to keep Holy Fountain in a central position for people to come back to. You'll also want to keep this up during burst in case someone is taking projectiles so they have access to heal as needed. Lastly, you can dispel the blind that gets inflicted by the right tower's purple arrows. Alright, that's about all I have for this guide. If you have any other tips, tricks, or any other questions regarding Bishop, please share them in the comments. And don't forget to check out Angela's guide linked in the description. I'm also always looking for more ideas for MapleStory content, so if you have anything you'd like to see, please let me know. Thanks for watching.